company is not a family, for better or for worse. In many aspects, company not being a family actually makes that company treat their team members, employees better. Because if you know, some families don't treat some of their members or many of their members nicely. So companies exist to be in a mission. Uh, missions are critical. Missions are something that should be defined and be North Star, but companies not a family. Hey everyone, it is Angie Wachowski. This is the Bet on You program. And just by way of introduction, I'm the New York Times bestselling author of Spark, Bet on You and Leading from the Front. I learned leadership in the United States Marine Corps and what a journey it's been sharing these military inspired leadership lessons with audiences all around the world. So Bet on You podcast, I created this program because I wanted to give you out there the information, tools, and resources you needed to bet on yourself. How do you get more clear? How do you get more confident? How do you get more courageous? How do you live what I like to say is the American dream? I was on a podcast um, promoting Bet On You and one of the interviewers, her name is Dana Prino. She's on the Fox News. She held me on her podcast and she mentioned to me and it stuck with me for quite some time that there's nothing more American than risk-taking. That is what we as a nation are all about. And yet many of us have a hard time taking risks. So for this episode, I decided to feature an immigrant who came to our country four years ago and right now is building this really exciting business. It's a vegan honey that he is creating. And it is just fascinating. So the company is called Melly Bio. The product is Melody Honey. And again, vegan honey, because he wants to save the world by saving bees and being very protective. Oh my gosh, it's so funny too. You start saying bee and you're like hive and you're like buzz. All these metaphors that are coming to mind that we could, and I probably will, be introducing into this podcast. But just thinking about his mission to save the bees and how that's driving the technology and all this innovation is so inspiring. So Without further ado, I'm going to bring Darko Mandich to the conversation to share with us his story so we can gain inspiration to dream big and do. And then, too, we get to hear all about his amazing company, what makes a culture work and what makes a partnership work. So here we go. Hey, Darko, thank you so much for joining us on the Bet On You podcast. And before we talk about this impressive business that you're building, I want to talk about your story or hear your story. Do you mind sharing with us your background? It's great to be here today, Angie. So thanks for that question. Always happy to share my story because it's also a reminder for me to remind myself of the story sometimes because uh, we often get caught in this busy world and keep forgetting what our stories are. And very often, you know, what's in our stories is actually what keeps us going. I'm an entrepreneur today. I work at the intersection of science, food, nature, and technology. Uh, next to that, I'm also an immigrant uh, in the United States. I call this country a home for the last four years now. I live in California. I love it. Uh, before this, I was... Uh, born and raised in Southeast Europe, born in Croatia, raised in Serbia, um, you know, traveled the world, always wanted to, you know, explore new countries, new things, um, trying to think of ways how I can be useful to the communities and societies that I've been part of. And definitely always curious to learn something new, uh, to build something with people and, and, place some bets, right? Because uh, that's what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely what you have to do. I always think when we first met and I was able to hear just, you know, what you endured growing up in Croatia and Serbia and just the level of movement you had to make at a relatively young age and then to find yourself in a foreign country and you are achieving the American dream in four years, I mean, it's just incredible to me. I hear so many people saying, you know, I want to get ahead. I want to take some risks. I want to better myself. And, and you've been doing it. And maybe that's the right time to talk about this 
entrepreneurial ambition and this big mission within you, because it's just so impressive what you've been able to accomplish here in this country in such a short period of time. Thank you for saying that. American Dream is alive. Uh, it has it has evolved. Uh, it's probably different than what American Dream used to be. Um, I think something that's really important about American Dream is um, this country and this community and many micro communities that embrace people who come here, offer them, give them a hand, and offer them an opportunity to integrate them into into you know into their society. You know, I came here as a total stranger. My wife and I picked San Francisco for, you know, few reasons, but we didn't know actually anyone here. You know, we have friends living in other places in the U.S. where maybe it could have been a little bit easier for us if we went to Chicago or New York or any other place. We wanted to be here. We wanted to be at a place where the future is being created and in a community that embraced us from 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 the from the get go so i think you know uh times do change with the evolution things can look different than what they used to be but there's one thing about this country which is that spirit and you know essentially in a way everybody being being a, a little bit of a foreigner here in a new land and um in a land of opportunities so for me this place is the best place in the world to build a business. I'm not saying this country as other countries in the world don't have any things to fix. This country has a lot of things to fix, but from the perspective of building businesses, this is the pl best place to be. And I'm excited to be here building my company, building my startup, uh, doing that with my co-founder who is American, who embraced a foreigner who he has met just getting off the street onto a meetup and just kind of deciding to launch a business with me. And you don't hear those stories happening in many other places in the world. So I want, I want to remind myself and I want to, you know, share this message to everyone there that there's still hope in terms of what values America can bring that all of us can take and make the whole world a better place. And that was so true. And you're right with Aaron, your co-founder. He comes from a science background and you have this big, bold vision. And what I love most about your story, Darko, is that you don't necessarily play it safe. And when you play, it's not just for the benefit of yourself. You're really on this planet. And with the work that you're doing, you want to save the world. Can you share with us just your vision and this bold dream that you shared with Aaron and, and where we are today with it. Yeah. Uh, in 2020, it was April 2020, the first big peak of COVID on the international level. Um, a Serbian immigrant from Croatia um, landed in San Francisco and went to a meetup and met American scientists and they started talking about bees. Uh, bees are, as many of you know, these lovely creatures that we can be thankful to because they provide us this planet that we have. And bees are in big trouble and mass scale um, commercial honey production is actually not helping the bees. So I pitched that to Aaron. I pitched that from the position of me having experience in that industry. I worked for largest honey companies in the world. I've seen how that industry is going, and I wasn't happy about that. And I, I just couldn't live with that fact that I've been part of that. So what I decided is to, you know, immigrate to the States, uh, try to find people that will be e as equally excited about the vision as I am. And, you know, that was definitely Aaron, my co-founder. In April 2020, we started Melly Bio, and, you know, we're about to celebrate our four years of existence in, you know, such turbulent times. If I think of, you know, us deciding to launch a company at, at the peak of COVID when we didn't know how the world would look like and going through, you know, uh, the best uh, moments in terms of the fundraising, the worst moments after the, you know, interest rates went up, uh, with the world being a place that has a lot of conflicts these days, us 
striving through those conflicts and building so that one day we can give bees a break, make that honey sustainably, and provide people an opportunity to you know enjoy sweet, nutritious, delicious product, but that doesn't come at a cost um, to these lovely creatures. So that, that's about business, and that's about the big bet that Aaron and I placed on ourselves, on our team, on our company. And so far, it's just a journey that has been so amazing, humbling, fulfilling, and we're yet to see where the journey will take us. And you have an amazing product already called Melody, right? Yes. Behind my back, there's a, a bottle of our product. Uh, our product name is Melody Plant-Based Honey. It's available nationwide now. What's really cool about it is that we were one of the fastest future food food tech companies to uh, go through the R&D phase and commercialize our products. I'll give you an example. In our industry, usually takes about seven to eight years and north of $100 million to get the future food product into the market in one geography. Four years and $10 million raised so far, we were able to get the product out in Western Europe and, um, and the United States as well in two geographies with a lean team that's um, smaller than, that's less than 20, 20 people. Um, it's, it's just an example of scrappiness and pure entrepreneurship that's even possible in the most uh, deep technology and hardest industries to, to tackle. It's amazing. And you're 100% right, even to fundraise in the environment that is present right now. And yet you guys are doing it and you're crushing it. And when you're CEO of an organization, it's not just product that you're focused on and worried about. It's also culture. And that's one of the things that really has resonated with me as I learned more about your organization, the purposefulness that you're building your team. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I love talking culture. Culture is so important for the success of any business. Look into any very successfully business that exists long in the market. Just uh, dig into it and you'll find amazing, consistent, and authentic culture that be, that's being built. So in Mali Bio, I always like to say that one of my key um, key things to work on is to be the guardian of the culture. That culture was not created solely by me. That cu- culture was created in, you know, in the work that Aaron and I did and all of our team members, the team members who are here, the team members who um, contributed and are not here anymore with us in the company. It's just something that we worked hard here to define and exercise. And yeah, to share a little bit about it, you know, when I think of cultures, one of the most important things that I've learned in my career and something that I love to start, you know, conversations around culture is acknowledging that company is not a family for better or for worse. In many aspects, company not being a family actually makes that company treat their team members, employees better. Because if you know, some families don't treat some of their members or many of their members nicely. So that, that's something that I'm kind of bringing uh, from my personal ethos. Um, we are, companies exist to be in a mission. Uh, missions are critical. Missions are something that should be defined and be North Star, but company is not a family. So when we get past to that phase, when I like to think about work, I like to think about, you know, making sure that the limited experience that people have in their life related to work is really nice. And the, the reason I say limited is because, you know, about a, it's healthy to work about a third of your time. You know, a third of your day you work, a third of your day, you know, you don't work, and a third of your day you should be sleeping because sleep matters a lot. So um, within, within that, you know, one third that we spend at, at working at our companies, organizations, um, I like to talk to my people we have a lot of conversations and, and we really 
basically self-identify values that, you know, all of us feel like represent the core of us as human beings, as well as people who are developing careers, that is sort of a common denominator for across demographics, interests, age, gender, whatever you like. So for us, that big mission is to give bees a break. Um, we're here to make the world a better place. And we unite in our differences to make sure that when we are here, one third of our you know, day, that we can work greatly, communicate amazingly, seamlessly, and just advance our mission. Um, and at, at, the, at the end of the day, when we you know, wave to each other at the end of the working day, just to go home to our family members and to feel like, feel uplifted and feel like we're giving some value to the world, not just, you know, taking something from it. I can imagine that that mission piece is, is obviously so critical to, to, to the meaningful work equation that you're talking about. And I recognize that being an entrepreneur requires a tremendous amount of energy and focus. Can you talk a little bit about you and how you maintain your energy and focus to do the hard work that is necessary to get your products on the shelves? I'm still a student of that. And I'm, I'm a better student. I might be now at master's studies of, you know, figuring out energy to serve me in the best place. Uh, at the beginning of my career, I was just not a great student of that. Or maybe I was, but I was taking lessons that were made of me running as fast and as strong as I can until I hit the wall. Um, you know, Meli Bio for me was an opportunity and, and the evolution of Meli Bio from a pre-seed company, pre-market to, you know, a pre-series A uh, commercially available product was an opportunity for me to rethink my work. Um, energy is, is the key there because energy helps you um, fulfill your um, discipline needs. Within the discipline needs, Showing up is very important in order to be able to show up consistently across a long uh, period of time. Energy regulation, energy management needs to be something that people should take care of. I've learned that if I, you know, work three or four days in a row really hard, I really need that weekend or maybe maybe a longer weekend to decompress. I also learned that there are people who approach to work charges me charges my energy in a good way and there are also people whose approach to work actually takes away from my energy so trying to you know be in tune with yourself trying to um, collect insights about yourself about your workplace about your team and acting on those insights was uh, helpful for me to pass more of these exams on this kind of a student journey of mastering my energy at work. Uh, focus is also important. It comes with, you know, to, 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 to gain focus is to regain control over your time schedule, putting lots of tools in place. Um, definitely one of the most important things that Melly Bio company-wide is really big on, and that is what every team member is doing right now is coaching. We like to work with smarter people than we are or people who have walked that walk or ran that marathon before us and through the coaching work to have strong foundational support system that holds us when we need to be helped. I think that is so key. I feel like that's often the afterthought on the business journey is, oh, now we have to think about culture. Now we have to think about people development when there was this mass rush to get product on the shelves and you're saying we need to do both in tandem and grow those two things as we go. So when we get to product on shelf, our people are ready for that next level. And I would love to hear from you because I know Aaron and have worked with him and now we're talking too. Can you talk about that dynamic of co-founders? Because that is so precious and important what makes a good co-founder relationship? Because I know a lot of people who are listening right now may be thinking about starting something with a friend or a family member. And 
they could definitely benefit just from your experience and what makes that relationship work? This is a very important question that everyone should ask themselves before starting a business. Um, having a co-founder is just an amazing ability to have someone who cares the same or more about that mission and vision, but hopefully comes with a different perspective, different skill set, so that together that whole, which is the co-founding team, is something that's stronger than what those individuals can be just by themselves. So, you know, that's the theory and practice, but the biggest key there is how do you find a co-founder and then how you how do you set some you know stage and then how do you manage the co-founding relationship successfully so that that empowers each and every co-founder in the company and that's a combination of art science and definitely a lot of hard work a lot of communication a lot of um, honesty a lot of you know candid conversations that very often do happen outside of the office. Those conversations happen on a hike. Those conversations happen over a glass of wine or beer. Those conversations happen, you know, when people can be a little bit more vulnerable than what we usually are in the workplace. And for Aaron and myself, it's been just a journey of evolution because Aaron and Darko, who started Melly Bai in April 2020, are just there in that April 2020. Aaron and Darko in 2024 are a absolutely new product of all those 1,000 days plus of communication, of you know, um, work together, goals fulfilled and celebrated, goals failed, and having conversations around that. And I can just say that I'm I'm really proud of where we are today. But that is not just a connection that was made and everything clicked. There was a lot of it to get started. But the, but through, after the honeymoon phase, that was really about a lot of communication, a lot of work, a lot of inspiration. And what I really love is that for Aaron and me, there's one thing that I can say that I'm really happy for, which happened to be like that. In the past four years, there has never been a moment where both of us were not feeling our best. But there were moments where I just didn't feel my best. And having him to kind of pick up and inspire me, get me back to my best was amazing. And I did that for him a couple of times. And then he did that back for me a couple of times. So that is partnership. And that is how many people define successful both life and business partnerships. Can you talk to the person right now who's listening, who has an idea, but might feel a little nervous about getting it off the ground or even asking somebody for support, whether it's information, introductions, or even a co-sign on a business loan. Uh, can you can you talk to that person and give them some perspective based on your journey and what you know about success in entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is a Six Flags uh, roller coaster very often, um, especially if you go the VC route where, where you raise from institutional funds where outsized results are expected and pushed all the time. Um, learn, about, learn about the rules of the game before you master the rules and set your own rules. Um, ask about the importance of that goal and why are you getting into, into that there are all kinds of entrepreneurship. There's definitely VC entrepreneurship, with, which is probably the most dynamic and can yield many six flags within the same day. You know, we we have yes. you know we have things that happen to us with the same days that are just so so high amplitudes. There's solopreneurship where you can start a coffee shop and you can start as a pop up and then you can grow into something else where you know you probably never want to take over Starbucks because you would want to value that freedom that you have with a coffee shop that you maybe turn into a smaller franchise afterwards. So ask yourself, what sort of entrepreneurship are you down for? There's also entrepreneurship where you feel like you're part of some organization that's small, medium-sized, or big, 
but you feel like you want to take action and, and make and use that platform to change the world for a better place. I definitely know that within our team, there are many people with entrepreneurial, you know, approach that are pure entrepreneurs of Mali Bias. So taking action and, and wanting to make yourself available for the planet in any way that makes you excited is not limited to the form of action that you want to take. So, you know, we should be really thoughtful about those labels because there are so many people out there um, that really have the ideas, they're hardworking. Sometimes the environment is just not receptive. Right now, it's harder to raise funds than it used to be. Um, maybe have a plan for the next two years before you you, you want to go bigger. Or maybe just go big and see what happens. See where the roller coaster takes you. Um, just stay in tune with yourself. Connect with the community. Try to learn from people that are ahead of you. Try to talk to people who failed and try to talk to people who succeeded because both people who succeeded and failed, they have one big thing in common. They all fail at least <laughs> once. <laughs> and they tried, right? Yes. They all tried and they got their foot in the game. And I think that is so important. Darko, where can people learn more about you and the work that you're doing in Meli Bio? Yes. I would love people to learn about our product. People can go to our website, melodyfoods.com, and Melody is M-E-L-L-O-D-Y, melodyfoods.com. If you want to learn more about the broader thesis of our company and how we want to reshape the honey industry and learn about our you know, B2B case studies, you can go to melibio.com, which is our website. Find us on social media. If you want to connect with me, if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to share your thoughts, if you want to ask me a question, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, you will find me under my name. That is great. And oh my gosh, how much fun do you guys have with all your labeling with bees, by the way, <laughs> the buzz about everything. There's so many metaphors we can pull from. <laughs> this is endless. <laughs> Look, if you pursue sweet partnership. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. So yeah. many. <laughs> Many nice things come out of the hive. <laughs> <laughs> Darko, thank you so much for being on the Bet on You podcast. This was so valuable to hear your story and your words of encouragement. Thank you so much, Angie. Good luck to everyone. Place a bet on you. Hey there, everyone. If you can't tell, I am super inspired by Darko and the work he's doing. And I want to talk about the three things I pulled from this conversation. First and foremost, it's to have a big, bold mission, to really understand your purpose and to take that and just push it a little farther. So it's not just necessarily in this world, what can I do to make myself successful, but what's the greater win? How do we push it? How do I make my family? How do I make my community? How do I make my country? How do I make my planet? Like, How can we push our mission, our vision, and extend our values to our world, because that's what gets us up in the morning. It is always better too, right? When we think about our mission and what drives us is helping ensure that we make the place that we're calling our world better just by simply starting something that has tremendous impact. The second is I really loved his idea about uniting in difference and building a team. It is so easy. And you see this happen all the time, especially in middle school, right? When there's cliques and formations that we can't get access to, it's easy to not unite because of our differences. But there's something to be celebrated with me not being surrounded by people who are like me. <laughs> I don't know if you feel that too, right? I know how I think. I know how I act. But there's so much learning and life enriching experiences just by being around diversity. So having a diversity of perspective on your team is so key. The third thing that I really valued hearing from the Darko conversation is about maintaining your energy. You know, time is finite, energy is infinite. Man, wouldn't we not love to have like the same level of energy all throughout the day? So as you think about yourself on this bet on you journey, how are you managing your energy? How are you waking up refreshed? How are you feeling at two o'clock after you've put already a hard day's work in? What about six o'clock? And if you find yourself wanting to crash on the couch, maybe it's time to do a check-in with yourself and get your energy back and really challenge and study and be that student, right, of your routine. Well, thank you again for being a part of this Bet on You podcast journey with me. 
Don't forget, this is the year of transformation and I have a really great brand new e-course that I rolled out. It's called, Now It's Time For You, How To Lead Your Career Transformation. And it is so rich of ways that you can take where you are right now, use your time, reflection, and effort to go where you really want to be. And also visit angieconnect.com. You get access to my blog and some of the past podcast articles and just a wealth of free resources that can help you on your life's journey. So honored to be hosting this series with you. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. 